we're going to work on optimization today. All right, so optimization problems are all over the place in science. And in fact, not just in science, also in economics, in the business world, in humanities, pretty much everywhere. So whenever you want to minimize or maximize something, this is an optimization problem. And we can generally solve these problems using calculus. So what I'll do in this video is first work through a typical optimization problem, and then I'll give you a step-by-step -step method for solving optimization problems in general. So here's a typical optimization problem. We want to build a cylindrical can that holds 20 pi meters cube of water. And what we know is that the material that we need to build the top and the bottom of the can costs $10 per meter square, while the material for the side only costs $8 per meter square. And we want to find the radius r and the height h of the can such that it is the most economical, so the cost is minimized. All right, so the first step is always to read the problem carefully, and second step is to draw a picture if needed. So in this case, let's just draw a little picture of what the problem is about. So we want to construct a can, something like that, has a certain radius r and a certain height h. Okay, and what else do we know? So we know something about the can. So the, the, the problem is telling us that the volume of the can is fixed. And in fact, it is given by 20 pi meters cubed. So I'm not going to carry the units around. I'm just going to reintroduce the units at the end. All right, so what is the volume of a cylindrical can? This is going to be the area of the top times the height. So this is pi r squared times h. And this is fixed. So in other words, we can deduce from that a relation between the radius and the height. Right? I can solve this equation for h, so I can simplify the pi's, and I end up with the statement that h is always going to be equal to 20 times over r squared for all the cans that I will construct. Okay, and then the next step is to actually introduce notation for the thing that I want to minimize or optimize in general. So I want to introduce a quantity or function that I want to optimize. In this case, the function we want to optimize is the cost function. So I'm going to call it C for cost. All right, so what is this? So if I read the problem carefully, the cost function will be given by the surface of the top and bottom. So the area of the surface, the top and bottom, times the cost for the material for the top and bottom, which is $10 per meter square plus the area of the surface of the side times the cost for the material for the sides, which is $8 per meter square. Now, of course, I need to replace the uh, words and brackets by actual equations, but I can certainly do that because the can is cylindrical, so this is pretty easy to calculate. So the first surface of the top is given by pi r square, and same for the bottom. So the surface of the top and bottom together will be given by 2 pi r square times 10. And the surface of the side, so this is given by the circumference of the uh, top uh, times h. So this is going to be given by 2 pi r times h times 8. So in other words, I get 20 pi r square plus 16 pi r h. And this is the cost function, which is what I'm trying to minimize. However, the way I wrote it here, it depends on two variables. It depends on both r and h. And with uh, the method as we've learned in calculus this year, we do not know how to optimize a function of two variables yet. So how can we actually solve this problem? Well, fortunately, we know that h and r are not independent because they're related to this equation, because the volume is always assumed to be fixed. So I can replace, uh, I can introduce that or substitute this inside my cost function here to rewrite everything in terms of r. So what am I going to get? So I'll get 20 pi r squared for the first term, plus 16 pi r, and then h I replace by 20 over r squared. And now I can simplify. I still have 20 pi r squared, plus this gives me 320 pi over r, which is now my final cost function as a function of a single variable, which is r. This is a function of a single variable. I can optimize it using the methods of calculus that we've learned this semester. All right, so we now have our cost function as a function of a single variable r, which is the radius of the can. 
and we want to optimize the cost function. More specifically, we want to find the absolute minimum of the cost function, because this will tell us when the can is the most economical to construct. But to do that, we need to specify the domain of the function. So I'm building a can here, so the radius certainly cannot be a negative number, and it cannot be zero, but it could be anything above zero, right? Now, of course, if the radius is very, very big, we don't expect that this will be the most economical can ever, because that means that, that will require a lot of material. But we can't exclude this case right away, so we really need to find the absolute minimum over the whole interval here. Now, this is not a closed interval, so we can't use the closed interval method. So what we need to do is find the critical numbers, argue that the, there is a local min that will also be an absolute min over the whole interval. All right, so let's find the critical numbers. So to do that, I calculate the derivative of the cost function. So I'll get 40 pi r minus 320 pi over r squared, which is the same as 40 pi over r squared times r cubed minus 8. Now, r equals to 0 is not a critical number because it's not part of the domain of the function. But there is a critical number at the 0 of the derivative, which is at r equals to 2. Now, is that a local min, max? Is that, in fact, an absolute min of the cost function? Well, I don't know yet, but I'll use the first derivative test. So I'm going to construct a table. Derivative of the cost function, cost function. There's a number of different regions. Uh, 0 between r and 2 is one of them. Then at r equals to 2, I know that the derivative is 0, and r greater than 2 is the other region. And I need to figure out what the sign of the derivative is. So if r is between 0 and 2, well, the first factor here is positive, and the second factor is negative. So the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. While if r is greater than 2, then everything is positive. So the function is increasing. Now the first derivative test tells us that this is a local min. But in fact, because the function is decreasing and then increasing and there's no other critical point, and in fact it is continuous over the whole domain, then we can conclude that this is also absolute min of the function over the interval between 0 and infinity, so over all positive numbers. In other words, this is the answer to our problem. All right, so if r is equal to 2, you also know what h is. So remember, recall that h was given by 20 over r squared. So that's 20 over 4, which is 5. So we know that for these particular values of r and h, the cost function will be minimized. So this will be the most economical can. So I would conclude the problem by saying that the can is the most economical to construct or to build if the radius is equal to 2 meters. Now I can reintroduce units and the height is equal to 5 meters. Okay, and I could also, if I wanted to, I could calculate what actually the actual cost of the function is for these particular values of radius and h. All I would have to do is substitute back the cost function. But the problem was only asking me what is the radius, uh, or, or what basically find the radius r and the height h of the most economical can. So this is the answer. All right, so let me end this video by giving you a strategy for solving optimization problems in general. Step one, read the problem carefully. That cannot be overstated. Spend the time necessary to really understand the problem. Step two, draw a picture if possible. If it is possible, then it will be helpful, so do it. Step three, introduce notation. So you want to assign a symbol to the quantity that you want to optimize, and also symbols to other quantities relevant to the problem. So in our case, uh, the function we wanted to optimize was the cost function, so we called it C, and it was written in terms of the variables R and H, which were in fact specified in the problem in this case. Step four, you want to write an equation for Q, the function you want to optimize, in terms of other unknowns in the problem. Now, if Q is expressed in, more, in, in terms of more than one variables, well, you know that we, we don't know yet how to optimize functions of many variables. So certainly there will be information in the problems that will allow you to find relationships between these variables and eliminate all of them except one. 
So in the end, you'll be able to rewrite the function as a function of a single variable. So that's exactly what we did in the problem. Started by writing the cost function as a function of r and h, but then we used the fact that the volume was constant to uh, get rid of h and rewrite the function as a function of a single variable. And finally, step five, you want to find the absolute max or min of the function over the range of x or the domain of x that's allowed by the problem. Now, if the domain is a closed interval, that's great. You can use the closed interval method. But if it's not, then you need to find the critical numbers, find local min and max, and justify why they are absolute min or max of the function over the domain.